you're announcing today a big deal with MGM Growth Properties. Explain the deal and what's in it for Vici. This is Ed Petoniak. He's the CEO of the real estate company called Vici. And Vici just announced that they're going to be buying MGM Growth Properties for $17.2 billion. This is an enormous deal. This is a huge acquisition. And Vici is showing that they're aggressively expanding their portfolio of properties. This is by far their biggest bet though. MGM Growth Properties is one of the most important real estate owners in Vegas. We're inquiring what we believe is the best in class experiential real estate portfolio in America. These are magnificent assets, seven assets in Las Vegas, eight assets throughout the rest of the United States, just in comparable scale and comparable quality. And what this will do is give both the owners of MGP and Vici an opportunity to participate in what we think is the continuing institutionalization of this asset class as this real estate gets recognized for being among the best real estate available for investment in America and frankly around the world. Ed mentions the institutionalization of this asset class, which is leisure and gaming real estate. Right now, he doesn't believe that it's been packaged and sold properly to the institutions. But the way that he's gathering up this real estate, doing these major acquisitions, and turning it into an easily investable asset, he believes it will grow institutional interest in this type of asset class. And over time, bigger institutions, passive index funds will put a much bigger weighting on these type of investments. He goes on to mention another benefit to the shareholder of buying MGP, which is diversification. Early on, 100% of our revenue came from Caesars when we first got started, Contessa. And then over the last three and a half years, which is the entirety of our history, we managed to get our uh, tenant roster up to about six tenants. MGM obviously now becomes uh, a new tenant of ours, a new partner. And so what had been 100% concentration of rent with one tenant will now be a rent roster in which our largest tenant will continue to be Caesars. And wow, did they produce amazing results in Q2, as I think you reported this morning, uh, followed by MGM. Caesars will be about 41%. uh, MGM will be 40. Altogether, our rent roll will consist of 84% of our rent coming from S&P 500 tenants. So with Vici buying MGM growth properties, they're heavily diversifying their tenant rent, meaning that no longer is 70 to 80% of their rents coming from Caesars alone. Now it's more like 40% coming from Caesars, 40% coming from MGM, and then the rest coming from other tenants. So they're still concentrated more so than other type of REITs, but they'll have a lot more diversification now than they did prior to this deal. Now, Ed goes on to address a question that's often brought up as a point of criticism for Vici, that if their tenants do well, like Caesars and MGM, if those operators do well, does that really help Vici? Do they directly benefit from their operators doing well? MGM, in fact, is uh, reporting earnings after the bell today. Do you get, is there an advantage for Vici when your tenants do well? Absolutely. And and I think what's really been gratifying is the way in which gaming operators have validated themselves as what we believe are the most dynamic, resourceful, leisure, entertainment, hospitality operators on earth. No one else has come through COVID like them. No one else was was capable of paying 100% of their rent in cash, on time, like operators like MGM and Caesars. Ed says that absolutely tenant strength and tenant earnings matter. In fact, he points out in 2020 how Vici had 100% of rent collected while many REITs struggled. This was one of the most hard hit sectors in the pandemic. REITs had a tough time collecting rent. If you look at the actual AFFO per share growth, Vici grew theirs 10.8% during the worst pandemic that we faced in the past 50 years. We have other REITs that grew theirs a little bit, 6%, 3%. Realty Income Corp was able to grow theirs by 2.1%. But then we have a majority of them having AFFO declines. Store Capital had an 8% decline. National Retail Properties had a 10.4% decline in their AFFO. And Spirit Realty had an 11.7% decline. There's many other REITs considered investment grade that have higher credit worthiness than Vici that had to cut their dividends during 2020. But Vici didn't only not cut their dividend, they raised it by 10%. 
So 2020 is a great example illustrating the importance of how the tenant themselves is operating. If they're doing well, they're going to be able to pay rent. If they pay rent, then the landlord gets paid. So it's incredibly important if Caesars and MGM is doing well, and Ed Hare is very bullish on both of these casino operators. And especially when you look like at a, a company like MGM with a man like Barry Diller on their board, what we are excited about is what entertainment and leisure can and will look like out of MGM in the years ahead as you take that that incredible vigor and energy that exists both on the MGM board and management team. So Ed's very bullish on MGM, the casino operator. He thinks they're going to do a very good job entertaining people. Now they ask about the market cap of Vici and how quickly the market cap of this company is growing. It's becoming one of the bigger companies in this industry. It's remarkable to me when I look at this deal that Vici then becomes uh, an estimated $45 billion market cap company that is far larger than Las Vegas Sands, than MGM, than Caesars, than any of the companies whose property you're owning. Yeah, no, we're, <laughs> we're, we're kind of amazed ourselves, Contessa. When we were born in the fall of 17, we had $600 million of rent. Pro forma for this transaction, we'll have about 2.5 billion, nearly $2.6 billion of, of rent or net, net operating income. And what's really exciting too is the, is the critical presence we're creating along the Las Vegas Strip. The Las Vegas Strip is the most dynamic experiential street in America. And, and somebody needs to tell me if there's a more economically productive street in America than the Las Vegas Sands, because I'm uh, sorry, not the Las Vegas Sands, the Las Vegas Strip, because the, the amount of of activity, economic activity that goes 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 forth along that street, again, I think is incomparable. And through this transaction, we give our investors really preeminent exposure to that economic activity. What Ed said here is true. With this purchase of MGM growth, Vici will own the huge majority of the Vegas Strip. So if you're buying Vici, you're buying a company that has the most exposure to the Vegas Strip out of any company in existence. Now he goes on to describe the financial position that Vici's in and their incoming dividend raise. Yes, we announced today, <laughs> might've gotten a little bit lost in the magnitude of the news on our new partnership with MGM. Uh, but we did announce today a 9.1% dividend increase, which comes on the heels of a greater than 10% dividend increase last year. The number of REITs last year that had to reduce their dividends was obviously very high because of COVID. The number of uh, REITs last year that grew their dividends by 10 or more percent was very small. And we're simply giving our investors the reward they deserve for the continuing growth of our business by putting forth this dividend increase that we announced today that will be effective Q3 of 2021. So effective Q3 of 2021, they're raising the dividend by over 9%. And that's in addition to the 10% raise last year. This is the bottom line of what Ed's wanting to do is increase the cash flow, increase the scale, increase the amount of dividend raises they can give to shareholders. Now he goes on to give some context of where this positions Vici in terms of size and scale. Yeah, well, in the REIT landscape overall, it'll make us uh, a top five REIT in America among what we call four wall REITs. These are uh, REITs that own buildings that can be occupied by people. This is to say, we are, in this case, we're not including the tower REITs, which obviously are by themselves of enormous economic magnitude. So we'll be a top five REIT. Um, we will be a REIT that should, we hope, and we know we don't control this, should stand us in good stead to be ultimately included someday. Again, we very much hope in the S&P 500. So a top five REIT, um, and when it comes to experiential, obviously the preeminent experiential REIT. So that's the interview with the CEO. This company's growing very quickly. They're going to be a top five REIT and they're going to be the number one experiential REIT. Now that's a quick look at the deal with the CEO, but I also want to jump further into this because when I look at my real estate holdings, I own both of these companies. I own both Vici and MGP. So when I initially heard this news that one of my bigger holdings, Vici, was going to be acquiring one of my smaller holdings, MGM Growth Properties, Obviously, I was okay with it. I had done research on each of these companies individually prior to this deal being announced, and I thought both of them were so good 
that I had investments in each of them individually, again, prior to this ever being announced. So I was initially pleased with the deal, but I wanna jump in in this episode into all the details. We have a basic overview from the CEO, but now I wanna go ahead and jump into all the specific details and the real strategic positioning that this gives Vici, because this does have some significant advantages. Now, before we go ahead and jump right into my portfolio and this Vici deal, I wanna do a quick reminder that the Joseph Carlson Show is available on every single podcast platform, all the popular ones. You can search The Joseph Carlson Show in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google or whatever, and you'll see it pop up there. You can subscribe there and listen to every episode in full. So just a friendly reminder, The Joseph Carlson Show is on every single podcast service as well for free. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump right into my passive income portfolio. This is my own personal dividend growth portfolio with a few caveats. I like to invest in what I consider to be high quality dividend paying growing companies that will provide both dividend growth and capital appreciation over a long period of time. I try to invest in companies that I see ample upside where I see lots of gains potentially in the future, but limited downside. I want companies that have a very small chance of failure, companies that have a very small chance of losing money on. So I have a diversified portfolio of what I consider to be some of the highest quality, most unique companies in the world. Companies like Costco, that have incredible business models, extremely low chances of failure, and high amounts of scalability, high amounts of upside. Companies like Disney with very unique properties. Companies like Nike with incredible brand image. I look for these type of companies that I think will have long-term sustained growth while paying the shareholder dividends the entire time. So that has been the core concept of this portfolio. Now, there's some updated links in the description if you wanna see all the holdings I have. I just have it called Dividend Portfolio in the description of this video. But let's go ahead and jump into the news with Vici. Vici's in my real estate category, which is a growing segment of my portfolio. Now, the reason that I've invested $21,000 into this company and made it such a big conviction, such a big position in my portfolio, is there's a lot of things about Vici that I find very attractive as an investment. One of them is I like the managers. I like the CEO of the company. I like the executives. I think that they're an incredibly competent team running this company. I've listened to their quarterly reports, and I just think that they have a very good understanding of the industry. They have an understanding of their growth path and they'll continue to grow this company aggressively. Vici's a company that has had a lot of AFFO growth, which is the real estate version of net income. It's like a normal company increasing their net income. Vici increases their AFFO. They also trade cheaper than most pairs. They had 100% rent collection throughout 2020, while many other REITs struggled. So there's many things that I like about this company. I think it will prove to be a good long-term dividend growth player. But I've been also buying another real estate company, another resort casino-based real estate company called MGM Growth Properties, ticker symbol MGP. And this was the news that was announced last week. Vici Properties is going to buy MGM Growth Properties. So one of the bigger holdings in my portfolio is buying one of the smaller holdings. Now, when I first read this news, obviously I was, I was okay with it because I like both of these companies. I purchased both of them individually. I've done research on both of these companies individually prior to this deal being announced. So when I heard that my biggest conviction, Vici Properties, is buying a smaller conviction, MGM Growth Properties, I went, okay, awesome. I like MGM Growth Properties. I already own that company. I see eye to eye with the management of Vici. They want to buy MGM Growth and I do too. So I was very pleased with my initial impression to see this deal. So let's go ahead and look at some of the highlights from the press release from Vici. This is where the management tries to explain the strategic benefits to the Vici shareholder of buying MGM growth properties. The first thing that they outline is no surprise to me. They say it's immediately accretive to AFFO per share. Now this is a little bit of real estate talk. You might not be familiar with the term accretive. Accretive means that it is beneficial, that it will lead to incremental improvements to the AFFO. So overall, Vici saying that this is immediately going to improve our net income. That's the way that you could read this if you're talking about a normal equity like Amazon or Apple, right? But when real estate's involved, they always term it accretive and the net income is basically called AFFO. That's the amount of money that they can give back to the shareholder. That is the bottom line. The CEO of Vici is very concerned with growing the AFFO. That is his primary goal. He's finding ways to grow that AFFO as quick as possible. And they outline that this transaction will accomplish their main goal of growing the AFFO. So that is the first and maybe the most important benefit of this deal is that it will increase their AFFO. 
but they highlight many other strategic benefits of this deal. The next one is that it will significantly diversify the tenant base. Upon closing, Vici Properties' top tenant concentration will be reduced to 41% from 84% currently. So the tenant concentration will be cut in half, meaning the company's income stream will be diversified away primarily from Caesars to other tenants like MGM. And they also mention that 84% a Vici Properties rent roll will be derived from S&P 500 tenants with a track record of having paid 100% of rent on time and in cash throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. So another thing they mention as a strategic benefit is the diversification this new acquisition will bring. Not all of their rent is going to be concentrated with Caesars. It's going to be diversified into MGM properties. But I still think it's worth mentioning that they do have a lot of concentration in Vegas. So if you're bearish at all in Vegas or tourism in Vegas, this is definitely not the company to be investing in. Now, of course, another big benefit of this deal is the amount of simple cash flow this will bring to the company. Vici Properties is expected to retain approximately 500 million of annualized free cash flow after dividend payments. That is huge. So after they pay out the shareholder the dividend, they're still going to have $500 million in cash every year left over that they say will be used to go towards highly attractive growth opportunities across gaming and other experiential sectors. So of course the company is going to be paying out that dividend every single quarter, but even after the dividend, they're still going to have half a billion dollars in cash to be able to deploy on your behalf and grow your cash flow over and over again so they can continue to grow that dividend. So that is a huge benefit. The company will have half a billion dollars in cash after dividend payments. They say the transaction will position Vici's balance sheet for investment grade status. It'll eliminate secure debts and establish an unencumbered asset pool. That is huge news. Right now, Vici has a sub-investment grade balance sheet, which comes with its disadvantages. When you're not investment grade, you're kept out of a lot of different index funds, you're kept out of a lot of different institutional capital. And so by improving their balance sheet, it'll actually unlock a lot of advantages for them. One of them, they say, is that doing this deal and being significantly larger and improving their balance sheet for investment grade will position them for inclusion in the S&P 500. So that is another strategic benefit. This will improve the balance sheet and position them for inclusion in the S&P 500, as well as many other passive index funds. So by their scale growing, by their size growing, it'll attract more of this capital from passive index investors. And they explain the consequence of this happening. If they're able to get this deal done, if they're able to get their balance sheet investor grade and be positioned for the S&P 500, that makes the cost of capital, the cost of getting loans, the interest rates substantially lower, which means that they can do more creative deals on your behalf. So the last major strategic benefit of this deal is they outline that it will have lower cost of capital due to credit rating and scale. So overall, it sounds to me like Vici has a purpose for doing this deal. They're not just putting it together to buy something or because they're bored. They're doing this for a specific reason. It increases their AFFO. It diversifies their tenant base. They'll now retain half a billion dollars in cash after paying the dividend. It'll improve their balance sheet, position them for S&P 500 inclusion, and it will lower their cost of capital due to higher credit rating and scale. All of those sound pretty beneficial to me as a Vici shareholder. So what an aggressive bet by Vici. They already announced this year that they're buying the Venetian. That's a huge acquisition. That's like $4 billion. But then they announced another $17 billion deal with MGM growth, which gives them another eight key locations on the Vegas Strip. And with that, they're basically buying the Vegas Strip. They're going to own the huge majority of it. They're going to own 660 acres across South Las Vegas Boulevard. So they aren't going to own a couple key properties like the Bellagio, a private institution called the Blackstone Group got to the Bellagio before Vici could, and I don't think they're going to give up that property anytime soon. So I don't think that Vici will be buying the Bellagio, but they're buying most of the other main properties, and now they own a huge chunk of the Vegas Strip. Now, if we look at the properties included in this deal, we have a lot of high quality places, and then we have a couple that are lower quality. The Mirage, I think, is very high quality. That's a five-star high quality location right on the Vegas Strip. It has Treasure Island and that volcano right in front of it. So I think that one is going to do just fine in the future. They also have included in this deal 51% ownership of Mandalay Bay. So that's another high quality place. They have MGM Grand, the Luxor, New York, New York, Park MGM, and Excalibur. Now out of these, I think the properties that are a little bit lower quality, a little bit out of date, are Excalibur and Luxor. 
Both of these are a little bit dated. They're certainly not the same quality as say the Mirage. But overall, I still think that this deal fits the theme of Vici wanting to buy these high quality unique places that can't be replicated. Now, even outside of those specific resorts in Vegas that they're acquiring, this deal includes eight additional properties throughout the US. So they are going to have some additional diversification outside of Vegas. So overall, I'm very happy about this deal. As a shareholder of Vici and a shareholder of MGP, I'm happy about this deal as Vici continues to aggressively expand. Another thing that they just mentioned is that Vici Properties will be raising their quarterly dividend by 9.1%. So it's going to be 36 cents per share, which means that the starting yield right now with a $30 share price is around 4.8%, which is a pretty decent yield. Now, what I plan on doing with my MGM Growth shares is just keeping them. Because when this deal goes through, every single MGM gross share will be converted into 1.33 Vici shares, meaning that my 80 shares of MGM growth will be roughly 107 shares of Vici. And that means that when this deal goes through, I'll own roughly 800 Vici shares. So that's my thoughts on the deal. Overall, I'm very happy about it. I think that it has a strategic purpose. I think it will benefit the shareholder. And I think that this company will continue to prove that it is a growth juggernaut with its acquisitions. Buying the Venetian, buying MGM growth, acquiring all these different unique high quality properties this aggressively is something that only a few companies are doing. So if you're invested in Vici, you're invested in a wild ride. I think that this company will continue to do these very aggressive acquisitions in the future. There is risk with every investment. With Vici, there's certainly risk. If the COVID Delta variant shuts down the economy or makes it so that traveling and going to these type of resorts isn't as fun, that could certainly affect the prospects of this company. So there's risk there, but in my opinion, I think that it does have a bright future. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Joseph Carlson. That gives you access to bonus episodes, exclusive content, a Discord investing community, and a lot of other fun things. So check that out. There's a link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode.